Welcome to the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame and what we like to call the Tennessee Talk of Fame, presented by the Tennessee Lottery. I'm Mike Keith, and this is, among other things, <laughs> Tennessee Sports Hall of Famer Eddie George. And it's good to see you. It's good to see you too, Mike. It that really is. Also, better known these days as Tennessee State head football coach <laughs> Eddie George, having just completed his first season. Got a run going there, four-game win streak, yeah. five wins on the year, some momentum. What you think of year one? Whew, um, I'm still assessing year one, uh, but the, the feeling that I have right now, this moment, is one of success. Not so much in the wins and losses, but um, all the things that um, doesn't go into the win column. It was becoming a team. Um, they had to trust me. My number one thing was they got, I have to earn their trust. You know, coming in off the street pretty much as a coach with no coaching experience, uh, all the stuff that comes along with me, my Heisman Trophy, being a Tennessee, Tennessee uh, uh, Titan for so many years playing in the NFL. These kids didn't didn't know what they were going to get from me, whether, whether, whether I was going to come in as a celebrity or or as a guy that really cared. Um, there were opportunities to film this and make it a reality show and to show the progress throughout the year, but I was like, no, that's not gonna happen because they have to really truly buy into what I'm telling them as truth, not just a tidbit or a snippet to go on a reality show. So I was not going to have that. I really wanted them to understand who I was and how I wanted things to be done and that I'm gonna be a man of my word, therefore you can trust me. And by you buying trust into me, we can build this thing together. And it was nip and tuck at first. It was a lot of uh, pushback, a lot of rebellion. But after um, a few up downs and some hill runs and you know some disciplinary things, um, we have established you know how things were gonna go. Uh, but I was really proud of how guys just fought every single week. Every challenge I put in front of those guys, they met it head on. Whether they failed or succeeded at it, they met it head on. And my goal was to have this team be dangerous by the middle of the year. You know, um, whether that meant a few wins, but when you turn on the film, I wanted teams to fear us physically. You know, they knew they were going to get a fight out of us. They had to go out and beat us. And I think that's what the guys did this year was to establish some type of identity, uh, became a team, uh, became selfless. Um, there was no selfish play. I had a fought for a larger purpose and the ability to teach um, life through football has been a gratifying thing because that's what it ultimately comes down to, is challenging them to be better men. Um, seen, do things with excellence, seen and unseen. And that was, uh, that was a victory to me. Do you think they were surprised that you dug into this the way you did? Yeah, honestly, I, I don't know um, if they were surprised. I just knew how I was going to do it. <laughs> like of every, of anything else I've done, everything I've done in my life, Mike, up to this point, has I, when I'm committed to it, I'm going to go ahead first into it, and I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to uh, fumble a few times. I'm going to not get things right. I'm going to miss something here or there, but those are opportunities for me to grow and learn. And uh, as hard as I'm going to go into coaching them, they're going to know that they've been coached. They're going to get all of me. They're going to get every bit bit, bit out of me. They're not going to get me just coming in just to give the schedule and, hey, you go out and do what you have to do. And I'm gonna challenge you at every turn. I'm gonna face mediocrity at every turn from them, from my coaching staff, from the, from the university itself, because that's what they hired me to do, was to come in here and create a winning culture. And that's the way that I know. That's how I've been coached, that's how I've been challenged, that's how I've overcome adversities in my life. Was to, uh, was to approach it in such a way as, as totally immersing myself into this um, and eliminating all the distractions and coming out with a product that we can all be proud of. What surprised you as you went through your first year? Oh, surprises. Um, 
I would have to say how there's always work involved. There's a lot of hours. Um, it, there is definitely a complete shift in my life over the last 15 years since I've retired to this one year. Um, you know, I've done Broadway, I've done my businesses, there's, there's been a lot there, but uh, to take on um, 105 young men and to treat them as my own sons has been surprising. Um, but the, the, the fulfillment that I get out of seeing them grow, get it, outweighs all the hard work. That's why I do what I do. It's for the student athletes, for the young men. Um, it's to see them respond in a way they say, hey, I'm gonna be more responsible. I, I see the benefits of discipline. I see the benefits of being a, a, an exceptional student in the classroom first. And to get um, uh, calls and uh, reports that my students, my, my athletes are being gentlemen in the cafeteria and they're, they're nice to young ladies, they're opening up doors, they're um, doing things the right way away from the field. Everywhere we've been, whether we're going on a bus ride to Mississippi State or in Canton, Ohio, how we conduct ourselves has been, that's a win to me. So um, it's, been, it's been remarkable. Your life has been multifaceted, <laughs> I know. so I'm dying to know. What, what do your players want to know most about you? What do they say? Hey, Coach, tell me about... You know what? They ask about my playing days. They don't, they don't know all the other stuff that I've done, like from Broadway to act. You know, they actually they do because they, they look uh, on ballers. They're like, Coach, I saw you last night on ballers. I saw you on um, this other show playing the cop and all well, of Even like stuff. the Nissan commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, and they take great pride in that. They're like, oh, that's my coach. I'm the coach. You know, you're on the Nissan commercials. And, and you know, I think that's, that's they go they go crazy. But they ask about my playing days. Um, what was it like to play with Steve? And what was it like to go up against Ray Lewis? Um, they have YouTube. Some kids didn't even know who I was. They said, oh, you played running back? I said, yeah, a little bit. I said, oh, you won the Heisman Trophy? I said, yeah, I did. I went to a team up in Ohio called Ohio State. <laughs> I know a little bit about football. Um, but, but more importantly, I think it's, it's more about, and my guys talk to me, it's about life and uh, how I was able to accomplish certain things. Um, how I was able to overcome uh, adversity. And, uh, you know, they are always making fun of me because I'm always coming up with some, an acronym or some motivational speech. And um, they enjoy that. They enjoy that about me, I think. Yeah. Is that the part of it that you maybe enjoy the most? Is sort of the interaction, the camaraderie, that these are your guys, and maybe they give you the business a little bit at times. And, yeah. yeah. You know what? It is. It's the locker room yeah. again. It was Bruce Matthews, Steve McNair, you know, Javon Curse, Mari Rowe, Blaine Bishop, Marcus Robertson, Eddie Robinson, Joe Bowden. You know, little Brandon Fisher running around carrying the balls for us. It's 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 back that again, but with my staff now and my and the kids and you know, I never thought I would be that guy that they would make fun of. None of us. None of us. I was always doing the imitation right. of Jeff Fisher and other coaches and doing skits. Now they're making fun of me. And it's like, oh God, God has a funny sense of humor because mm -hmm. because of that full circle. So. Um, a lot of that stuff has has come back full circle for me, but I'm a different man now. Um, I'm seasoned in so many different ways um, at, at this point in my life, from business to having gone through the NFL and um, making a transition, getting my education, going through depression and redefining myself and failing in various areas and so forth. And there's a there's another. Um, version of myself that I bring to this that's that's equipped to do this. Um, maybe not necessarily from the X's and O's side yet, but just from a life experience and and what
what these young men can do for themselves through this experience and how it's going to benefit them for a lifetime. You know, it, taking out, like, how we started off with one and three and having to turn that around. You know, the energy that went into that, the focus, the, um, the level of detail, the belief. You know, when I saw them, we went, at, we went and started off one and three. We got our, our tails kicked against Simo. I mean, they rushed for almost 300 yards once that day. We were not prepared to play that game at all. And I put all that blame on me. I told them, I said, listen, this one falls on me. We were not ready to play. Uh, and that, from the coaching staff, from the game plan, from coming down here, travel, and that falls on me. I will never make this mistake again. That very next week, we were lined up in pads. We were hitting every day. We were channeling, I was challenging everybody. I told uh, the defense which way the running back was going. So I wanted him to approach the whole uh, with tenacity and with purpose and understanding that, hey, it's not about you know running through a gaping hole, it's about creating a hole. It's about getting the hard one and two. And that very next week we play against Austin P. We go up there, they, I think they were ranked 16th in the country, had one loss, they were flying high. And we went there on a night where it all kind of came together and that belief started to happen. And you can see it go off like, oh my God, this, what he's telling us and preaching to us is coming to fruition. And, and that's when it started to kick in. As I listened to you talk and as I listened to you when they hired you, it was obvious that you took this job because you felt like you had something to give back to the mm -hmm. game. Yes. Is it teaching the lesson of you got to gain the hard one and two? And I'm talking about a life lesson. I'm not talking about the, the hard one and two is every day. The 70 yard runs are every once in a while. That's right. Unless you're Derek Henry. Unless you're Derek Henry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's once a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a matter of when. Yeah, so he's so blessed. But um, it, it is teaching about the more hard one and two of life. Um, that's the beautiful thing about it. Uh, one thing that I pulled out from this team this year is to understand that their best asset, their greatest asset was that they were fighters mm -hmm. across the board. Um, they liked to fight in practice. They wanted to fight each other. Um, so I had to channel that energy and that, and, that, and that grit to say, okay, let's do it as a team and direct it this way. So what I did was I began to get all the classic fights, greatest fights in history, Muhammad Ali, Against Frazier. Which one? Um, a down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier? Yeah, the, the Thriller Manila. Manila. Okay. Yeah, Thriller Manila. I uh, used Tyson and Dust Buster Douglas. Um, uh, Tommy Hearns and uh, Mark 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 Hagler. Hagler. <laughs> the, the greatest. <laughs> and, you know, just to see their response to the fights and to you know, draw an analogy of what we're going to fight, fight go into week to week they respond extremely well. So my thing was to them was that, yeah, you know, you won't get hit in the mouth, you are going to get knocked down even when you have a game plan, but how do you get up, how do you respond to that? How do you look at every loss or every lesson as a blessing versus your identity? That's where we're going to start to flip the switch. We're going to learn from our losses. We're going to learn from our setbacks, our failures. When you get your ass kicked, there's a lesson there to learn, not how to get it kicked again. So let's embrace that part of it versus, oh, okay, that happened again. We're we are losers. We don't know how to win. Maybe there there's always tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. All you have is right now, and you have to change your your, your thought. Your, there has to be a paradigm shift in your thinking in terms of how you view that opportunity to grow in a loss or in a setback. So this is as fulfilling as you thought it would be. More? You know what, Mike? Um, I was trying to uh, intellectualize like how and why I'm at this point in my life and and say, okay, I, I got out of football, I got, on, got into acting. Well, how does that play a part into this coaching job? Well, as an actor, the greatest thing you can do is listen respond. So I'm going to use that gift of listening. 
well, how does that equate to now, you know, getting my master's in business and my financial literacy and my financial firm? Well, I can teach about financial literacy to these young men, but I can also look at the business of college football to make decisions, how we can be more efficient in various areas, externally speaking, you know? So all those things that I've done up until this point has prepared me in some weird way to be a head coach. You know, I have the background from playing football. I don't have my, I'm not, I haven't been a coordinator, I'm not a position coach, I was never a GA, did great down film, but I know a good product when I see it. I know what I want, I know what I want. And the learning curve for that is gonna be what it's gonna be. But I can put people together and delegate and try to put the team, the team together, great coaches, staff, see what's needed and put a product that I know is gonna be successful on the football field. It's not that hard. You know, football is football. You know, it's about winning in the trenches, and scoring more points than the other team, <laughs> you know, and winning time of possession and all of that good stuff. So I, I, I know how to do that. So it, 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 was, it was strange when I was asked to become the head coach or the opportunity presented itself. I thought, that President Glover was all for her locker. I, I, I'm like, really? <laughs> you know, you, I haven't, I'm not a coach. I know the game, I played the game at a high level, but it makes you think I'm, I'm a coach. Like really, I'm, I'm trying to build a business. I'm trying to win a um, Oscar, a Tony, a Grammy. I just, I just, I'm thinking all I want to do. The only thing I want to see football wise is my son played, you know, in college and high school. But when I asked my, when I told my wife about it, um, I was really coming up with all different excuses, types of excuses not to do it. And when she hit, she hit me with, well, when you're on your deathbed, is this something you'll regret? And I had to really meditate on that and think deep and hard about that because I knew in my heart that I could do something, give something back to these kids. The question was, did I have the energy? Did I really want really to immerse myself into it? Because I would have to give up all these other things right. that I built. And um, when I began to get excited about possibly working with Jeff Fisher in this capacity and mentor, coaching me to be a coach and bringing, giving other coaches opportunities to come here and helping refurbish um, a, a program that was once proud and rich in football tradition that just needed it's a diamond that just needs to be polished up a little bit and sit in the right direction, both in the business world and on the field. All these ideas were just coming flowing through my head, and I started to get this this um, little spark of energy on the inside. And I was like, man, it's a way to be competitive, and I'm thinking, okay, first day of camp, I'm going to do nine on seven, and we're going to, you know, do goal line, and I'm just thinking of the conditioning program and uniforms and how we're going to operate, and you know, all of these things are just going through my head, and I was like, okay, let's give it a shot. What's the worst that can happen? We lose a few games. But the truth is, you're not coaching football. You're coaching young men, coaching men. and young men and young women who are involved around your program. No young people, let's put it that. Yes, yes, I'm coaching young people and. They're coaching me. Mm -hmm. I'm learning too. I learn from them as they're learning from me. Um, so that's been the great thing about it is that we're at a, we're in an environment where we have young people, men and women, on our floor that I'm touching each and every day. They are watching me every single step of the way, dealing with some type of issue handling a disgruntled player, handling a player that needs some attention, some TLC, so a player that needs discipline, or a coach, or some young lady, always dealing with some uh, some issue on the floor. They're always watching me and how I operate. So it's, it's important that I uh, present myself in a way that's authentic, but also that has a, a great deal of self-control and compassion. And that's diplomatic and that can see 
see life from every every facet, not make a, a rash decision, but really absorb it, meditate on it, and then find the solution for that point. When Eddie George, who was at Fork Union, who nobody wanted coming out of high school and ended up at Fork Union, would you have ever thought that this would be your role, not just football coach, but but trying to do more with your life for other people than just be famous? Because, I mean, you've got a lot of trophies. I mean, you've, you've had a lot of success. No, but back then, no. It's funny you say that, because today I pulled out an album by Biz Markie. Uh, I remember this one. Yeah. It was an album called I Need a Haircut. Right. And it was 1991 when this album dropped. And I listened to that album almost every day going through Fort Payne because that was like going into my postgraduate year. Didn't know what was going to happen. I had zero scholarship offers from uh, any school. The only offer I had was a partial offer from Edinburgh. So, um, Life for me at that time was very unpredictable. Um, I had I came back to Fort Union from postgraduate year, bigger, stronger, faster, just hoping for an opportunity. Uh, and during that time frame, it was about just let somebody see what I can do. Give give me, give me a chance to play. Give me an opportunity. This, I pro I, my thing was, I promise you, you won't be disappointed. You know, a lot of no's before there were some yeses. So now, on the flip side of that, we just had our um, recruiting weekend this past week. And I was sitting, with the, I was sitting here with this family, and we had a great week, and I asked this kid, well, are you ready to commit? And he was like, hell yeah, coach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. And it almost brings tears to my eyes because I'm now giving him and his family an opportunity to him live in his dream, to live out a dream and go on and do great things. And I would never think that coaching could provide me the opportunity to give somebody uh, a chance to live, to live out their dreams and, and hope. So it, this has been greater than anything that I could have conjured up. It's greater than winning a Heisman. It's greater than uh, going and playing in the Super Bowl is greater than any award that's in my my trophy case because I'm impacting a life that has a ripple effect that can go on for generations. You know, this is uh, my trophy will be, you know, collect dust. It will get old. People will forget at some point, but planting those seeds and giving opportunities for these young men and women goes on infinite and that's and that's remarkable so I, I get the rush now that coaches get when they get into coaching dramatic turn we're in the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame mm -hmm. you're now a semi-finalist for the Pro Football Hall of yeah. Fame finally <laughs> finally it happened that you're being recognized the way we feel like you ought to be recognized when you found out that finally it had happened, that you are a step closer to Canton, um, yeah. what did you think? Got chills. Um, I know there's still more to the process. Um, I felt honored that um, being considered to go into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, given all of the players that are up for this opportunity. Um, and I, I'm just, just really relishing the moment because I know that there are still levels to it. And it's, it's tough to really get too excited because you just don't know. But at least this is a step forward toward that. I think um, I think that whole era, honestly, deserves that recognition. Myself or Steve or Javon. Um, and you just can't look in just in the numbers. I mean, you, you just can't look at the numbers we have to look at what we meant to um, our team, that era. Um, the, the guys, the Hall of Famers that we went against and dominated. <laughs> you know, um, we fell just a yard short of, of winning a Super Bowl. Um, that stretch, you know, we you, you can compare us to anybody, I think we were second or third in wins during that time frame. So, um, 
to be recognized means that all of us were recognized and appreciated that, hey, we had, we left a thumbprint on the NFL during that time when we played. If you make the Pro Football Hall of Fame, if you are inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame at some point, who will you be happiest for? Who in your life will it mean the most to? It, my parents. You know, um, um, they, uh, um, well, you know, um, my mother and my father. Here. Mm. To, uh, they were very proud of you, and they got to see it. They got to see so much greatness out of Eddie George, the guy who nobody wanted out of high school which is, as a parent of two adult children now, I can tell you the things that your folks see. When my, when my kids do something well, it's a lot greater than anything I've ever thought about doing. Yeah. Which is why you are the way you are as a coach, because they instilled that same feeling in you, and now you have 105 sons. <laughs> Well, thank you for articulating that. <laughs> well, I just know I, I saw the ones and the twos, Eddie. Yeah, I saw the ones and the twos, and yeah. I came to love your game because the ones and the twos, when it was hard, is when you kept hitting the rock every single time. It's why when you were one and three, I knew you'd come back this year. Yeah. I knew your guys would find that the ones and the twos, because I mean, that's every day. Consistency and discipline, you know. Um, yeah, but th that that uh, my my parents for sure, um, because they they my mother especially instilled so much into me. My father had his struggles, and it was because of my father that I loved the game of football, mm -hmm. and I wanted to connect with my father through football. I wanted him to be proud of me the way he was, um, uh, way, the way he revered uh, Jim Brown. Mm -hmm. And my mother worked her tail off to put me into a situation where I couldn't succeed. There was a time when I was not on this path. You know, we're living in Philadelphia and I was rebellious and I was going down a way that she could see that in three years, I wasn't going to announce anything. I wasn't going to realize my potential. So she made the tough decision to drive me down to Virginia, 15 years old, and to trust these men that she was going, that at least I'm out of Philadelphia. And I'm, I'm, I'm in an environment that I can prosper and succeed. And uh, she worked the tail off. She worked numerous jobs from flight attendant to stewards, I mean, uh, flight attendant to waitress, to model, to uh, working um, odd jobs just to pay that off. Um, never came to me when I was playing, asked me for a dime to pay that off. She paid that money off when I was my second or third year in the NFL. Drove down to Fort Greene Military Academy and gave them the final check. And that to me just said a lot, you know, in terms of the sacrifice that she made. So, you know, even um, even if it doesn't happen this year uh, or never, um, I'm hopeful that, that it will happen, uh, this just step of recognizing my parents and um, what they've instilled in me means everything. What are you most proud of at this moment of your life? I'm most proud of my sons, um, the, the men that they are becoming. Um, I don't have to say a whole lot. You know, my your oldest son is at USC Film School. He is um, maturing into an awesome man. He's a man of faith, a man of God. Uh, he, uh, 
is is maturing in so many ways. It's this that makes me proud. Like wow, you know, I don't have to worry about him in in terms of his lifestyle or decisions. I'm sure he's going to make mistakes, but he has a strong head on his shoulder shoulders. Um, after not having the, the career he wanted to have in football, Vanderbilt, he rebounded and he's turned things around and, and is on the verge of becoming a, a, a brilliant filmmaker. Um, watching my youngest son uh, in Montgomery Bell grow and develop into uh, an exceptional student athlete uh, who has embraced life and embraced the goals. And, you know, I've, I've been trying to get through him so many times um, to see him grow and, and become a young man and become a man, young man of responsibility has been phenomenal. And the life that I'm living with my wife, um, to be married now for what? I don't even know this, like almost 18 years. Wow. Congratulations. Right. <laughs> that's, a, that's an accomplishment. It is. And it's taught me to become a better leader. Because if I can't leave my household, I damn sure can't leave to my man or become a coach. Sure. So I credit my wife for having the grace, the patience, the love, the um, uh, the compassion to to be with me as I developed in the various phases of my life, and that has forced me to look a lot deeper into who I am and what I do on a consistent basis and how I approach things day to day. Because when things are hard at home, you can't run from it. You know, you gotta leave it head on, you gotta come up with a solution, you gotta compromise, you gotta, you have to listen. So a lot of the things that I've learned <laughs> bringing to this coaching thing is that stuff that I deal with at home. You know, you gotta learn how to lead yourself. <laughs> well, he's a Tennessee Sports Hall of Famer, he's a high school trophy winner. He's a seven-time thousand-yard rusher. He's a four-time Pro Bowler. He's an actor. He's an entrepreneur, and he's the head coach at Tennessee State University. Uh, Eddie George, thank you for joining us on the Life. Tennessee Talk of Fame. Love it, man. Appreciate and we we're hoping very soon a Pro Football Hall of Famer. Thanks so much to you for watching, and thank you so much for the Tennessee Lottery for making this happen.